Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And uh, in the segment of our program, we are going to talk about the performance of the Egyptian economy as finance minister. Mr. Mohammed Moit uh, prepared uh, the new draft budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and presented to the parliament stating that the draft uh, budget aims at increasing growth rate to reach 6% at a cost of 6.163 trillion pounds. And uh, to shed more light on this issue, we are joined by Mr. Henny Abufutur. He's an economic expert. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hani. And let me start by talking about the most important indicators that help to decrease the unemployment rate and also improve performance and reduce um, the physical deficit. Uh, in fact, the most important indicators uh, that helped uh, unemployment uh, to uh, reach now to 8.9% as opposed to 10% uh, 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 is attributed mainly to the uh, physical and economic reforms which have been taking place since uh, year, uh, since uh, November year 2016 and uh, the improvement in the economy is reflected directly on the unemployment uh, the uh, the unemployment uh, is very important to keep it uh, at a very low level in order to uh, find jobs and create jobs for the uh, for the uh, younger, pe particularly the younger people, so the the budget deficit, the budget deficit, which is uh, now under, uh, is improving. It is it stands at uh, uh, eighty uh, nine uh, percent of GDP, and uh, it it is uh, improved from the previous year, which was uh, one or two percent of GDP. So I see all these improvements are reflected directly. And one important point here is to mention is that the mega project also contributed to uh, decreasing the, uh, uh, the unemployment rate significantly. And uh, we've, seen, we've, we've been uh, seeing the uh, mega projects uh, for several years and uh, they are expected to continue uh, for the future in the coming few years as well. So, uh, also, the minister pointed out uh, that indicators of the international organization, the Fitch, classified Egypt's economy as P+. Plus. So, uh, what is the meaning of this uh, classification and uh, what are the important factors that helped to reach this positive classification? Uh, let me explain what is Fitch, mm. because most yes. of viewers uh, uh, have a big idea about the rating agencies and the uh, rating uh, scheme. Fitch is a research company, an American research company. Among its services, it provides research on the credit worthness of the debt issuers. Yes. Uh, the debt issuers includes big companies and even uh, countries. Th those who issue public debts, to, uh, issue debts to, uh, to the public, to the investors. Uh, when Egypt uh, issues debt, uh, debts, the, the credit worthness of Egypt to repay the debt on time as well as the interest must be assessed by an independent organization such as S&P Moody's or Fitch. Uh, Fitch recently upgraded the rating of the IDR which is the issuer uh, debt uh, rating, the foreign currency uh, uh, ability to repay the debts from uh, B to B plus, which means Egypt has a stable outlook. Uh, one important point here also to mention is that the uh, the 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 ability to uh, for Egypt to repay its foreign currency long term foreign currency debts uh, induces or encourages the investors to buy the uh, uh, the the Egyptian bonds. Uh, on the long and short term and actually this uh, without uh, the uh, increase the improvement in the IDR rating uh, Egypt would, wouldn't have been able to continually issue uh, foreign currency debts. Uh, the, 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 the indicators that made or the drivers that made Fitch to uh, improve its rating on Egypt long foreign currency long term uh, debt includes the 
uh, controlling the budget deficit and uh, uh, other uh, significant uh, reforms on fiscal and economic reform. Uh, the, I mean the fiscal and economic reforms. Uh, one big misconception about uh, the, the public debt is that uh, while the public debt uh, to uh, uh, GDP stands at 89% uh, and it's still, uh, still high, other countries maintain or sustain uh, a higher debt uh, ratio like Japan for example. Japan uh, has been maintaining a, uh, uh, a ratio of uh, more than 200% Italy. Italy is 130% while the important fa factor is a country should be able to repay the debt on time. It sh the debt, regardless whether it is high or low, it is unless it is under control and unless it is a local debt, it is, uh, it is, it is, uh, it, it is on the safe side. While Ukraine, for example, the debt was 30% in defaulted in year 2015. Right. Um, talking about measures that can be taken to reduce the public debt and the overall budget deficit and also um, provide necessary funding for comprehensive development and social uh, actually uh, protection. And this is one of the main concerns now of any Egyptian citizen as well. Uh, I think uh, one of the best approach to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to keep this under control is to adopt a strategy on public de debt, uh, whether it is a local or it's foreign debt, uh, like uh, having a cap on, uh, on the public debt that the country should not, the state, the government should not exceed that cap. Also it is important uh, to uh, uh, maximize the revenues of uh, the country and uh, uh, rationalize the expenses uh, to diversify the source of funds for uh, borrowing and to encourage or promote the uh, debt instruments in uh, or listing the debt instruments in the international uh, stock exchanges. Okay, sir, if we talk about uh, the government's efforts to expand social protection programs and improve the quality of education and health services, how do you see this? Uh, I see that the government uh, has taken some measures in the, uh, in the coming year's uh, budget uh, to boost uh, the social security networks. For example, it has allocated uh, funds uh, uh, for uh, uh, food subsidies, uh, more funds for uh, cash subsidies, uh, the, what is known the Takaful and uh, Karama program. Also, uh, uh, increasing the allocations for uh, improvement of health care, uh, eliminating the long waiting list for uh, surg uh, surg uh, surgeries and, and uh, subsidizing uh, the uh, transportation for, uh, for students, among other uh, steps as well. Well, uh, of course, this is something of great importance, but also talking about um, the positive effects of Egypt's current rise in the price of the currency and the, the low uh, unemployment rate and the increase in volume of Egyptian experts. And this has to do also with the projects taking place and providing more job opportunities and, of course, increasing the production as well. Uh, one important point to explain here that we've seen the Egyptian pound, the exchange rate of the Egyptian pound versus the US dollar uh, is incre uh, decreasing. So uh, the dollar is traded the, this week at uh, 17.20 and the, uh, the range 17.20 to 17.30 as opposed to uh, 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 one month or a couple of months ago it, won, it was traded at uh, nearly uh, 17.80. Uh, uh, unless this trend continues for a uh, relatively uh, longer time, we will not have tangible uh, impact or effect. We will not see decreasing or decreasing the prices in the market. So uh, Egypt uh, uh, imports most of its uh, uh, foods and uh, commodities 
uh, we are a net importer country, not exporter country. So the expected impact in the uh, in, at least after three to four months, if this continues on the same level, would you would uh, feel the the cost of importation dec dec uh, decreased and accordingly reflecting on the cost of uh, goods and services. So this is, I think, like, uh, we hope uh, we cross, uh, keep, uh, keep uh, fingers crossed to, to continue. Okay, Mr. Haney, a short break, uh, dear viewers, and we'll be back, so stay tuned. Welcome back, uh, and uh, we are still hosting Mr. Haney, Abu Futuh, economic expert, and uh, talking about the economic reform uh, program and to what extent it contributed to attracting investors. Well, Egypt has taken the uh, economic reform program and uh, the results are very encouraging. Even the results have exceeded the expectations of the IMF. Uh, according to a recent statement of the IMF, uh, uh, declared that uh, the uh, expectations for the foreign direct investment in Egypt to reach 11.2 billion uh, dollars in the fiscal year uh, 20, uh, 19, uh, 20, uh, 20. Uh, whilst the uh, foreign direct investment globally has been decreasing due to several problems in the emerging markets. Uh, and a recent report by the ONCAD uh, revealed that the decrease, the sharp decrease in the FDI amounted to 40%. Uh, this has all, uh, in, indeed impacted all emerging markets, including Egypt. Uh, during the first <laughs> half of this year, the foreign direct investment in Egypt amounted to uh, $2.8 billion, with a decrease of 30%, uh, 36% as compared to previous year. Uh, so, uh, still Egypt is an attractive place for foreign direct investment. It ranks number one in Africa as a good, uh, as a best destination for uh, foreign investments. So uh, the, uh, the reform, the economic reforms, the fiscal reforms, the legislative uh, uh, infrastructures reforms, all have contributed to encouraging investors to, uh, put to put or inject more money in Egypt, despite the global trend of decreasing or shrinking the foreign direct investment. Well, talking about um, Egyptians in general and the recent directives of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to the Ministry of Finance of increasing wages and pensions and its effect uh, on whether we're talking about the Ministry of Finance or talking about people in general. Well, it has been a long-awaited uh, uh, initiative and uh, most of uh, Egyptians uh, were thrilled to uh, receive this uh, good news. The directives of the President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to the state uh, is, uh, has been taken uh, to, uh, in a form of seven dec decrees, primarily increasing the minimum wage from 1,200 to uh, 2,000 pounds, uh, uh, allowing or providing uh, promotions for uh, a large scale of state employees, increasing the pensions, all these uh, steps were encouraging and well received by uh, all Egyptians. The impact, of course, the expected impact, of course, would uh, unfortunately uh, would, uh, if not well controlled by the government, uh, that the prices should be kept under control and monitoring, uh, the prices would uh, unfortunately soar by, uh, by July. So uh, we, we, we hope that the government spends more efforts to uh, monitor the markets and the uh, prices and so that uh, the effect of uh, the net effect of uh, uh, this good decrease would be diminished by increasing the prices. So, sir, talking about the role of the private uh, sector in uh, implementation of uh, the mega projects and uh, the role of governmental institution in supporting the private sector. The private sector should be enabled, mm. the private sector should be enabled to take a bigger role in the economy and this is the, what is happening in yes. any free market. Uh, the mega project, uh, of course, allows 
the uh, <laughs> private sector to take part in the form of private, uh, public-private partnership and even subcontracting. So uh, the private sector plays a, uh, an important role uh, and uh, gets benefits from these mega projects. Uh, uh, Talking about um, the youth potentialities and the, the role of the government in preparing our youth for the labor market as well, how do you see it? The youth should be leading uh, the country in all aspects, in all areas. Okay, and that's we have been seeing that in uh, recently in many in many areas like uh, the directives of uh, uh, the president that uh, the uh, leadership of all government positions should be given to the youth, and no one should exceed the age of 60 who hold uh, a, a, a higher position in, in the government or any government-owned uh, companies. The government should actually enable uh, the youth to take a more positive role in the economy uh, by uh, providing education, awareness on running, uh, uh, small, uh, running projects, SMEs, SMEs entrepreneurship. Uh, all these are <laughs> initiatives that the government have been posting by introducing several programs for the youth and SMEs and entrepreneurship. So, sir, uh, to what extent Egypt 2030 development plan will help in achieving sustainable economic growth and, the unem and in, uh, lowering unemployment rates? The 2030 uh, plan actually mm. matches very well with the constitution and, and uh, the objectives of the plans is to uh, boost the uh, role of uh, women in the, uh, in, 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 the econo in the economy and in the society and encourage sustainable development uh, on the environmental and the commercial uh, scale. So uh, these are all working in tandem. Well, as you kindly mentioned now, talking about the SMEs. So let me go back to the fact or the importance of SMEs in boosting any economy of any country and the efforts exerted by uh, the country actually and the government to support uh, SMEs and to provide them different opportunities. Maybe in the past we used to talk about the challenge of funding, but uh, as we can see now it's not uh, the idea of funding. Now they are providing even the know-how and they continue working with any of the youth actually who is starting a new um, project till the end till he starts to be uh, existing uh, on the ground. So how do you see this and how important it is in boosting the economy? As rightfully said, uh, funding has always been the uh, major problem for SME sector. Uh, the problem ha uh, of funding has not funding completely... Funding and incubators as well. Yeah, incubator yeah, has not been completely uh, uh, dealt with and uh, finished, but it's still a problem. The government, as, as, as you know that the SME sector represents nearly from 80, a range between 80 to 90 percent of all businesses in Egypt. That means Egypt is largely an SME society. Uh, the government has taken several initiatives, uh, whether it's on the financing side, uh, and uh, by way of example, the Central Bank of Egypt uh, two years ago uh, or three years ago uh, allocated or presented an initiative for SME funding by requesting banks to maintain at least 20% of its loan portfolio for SMEs and, uh, and uh, the, uh, encouraging the uh, SME to get funding from banks at lower interest rate ranges between 5 to 7 percent. Uh, and as you said, uh, the, uh, the government also is taking several other initiatives, not particularly funding, but in the technical assistance like uh, incubators, like uh, technical assistance for the uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, so this represents the, uh, the strong will for the government to encourage this sector because it is large and it must be uh, uh, taken care of. 
So, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, Mr. Abul Futuh, thank you, sir, for being with us today. And uh, yes. thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hani Abul Futuh, our economic expert. And still, we have more to bring you on our breakfast show. But first, moving on to a quick break, then we'll be back with more on our breakfast show.